Whoa now. We've got a big week on the weekly stand show. 562 players is kind of one of the, the biggest participation groups we've seen in, in a little while. Yeah, this is right up there with Age of Sigmar, just for context for anyone who's curious. Age of Sigmar had 680 players. 40k, 2,900 players. So, Kill Team, Age of Sigmar, pretty up there. No GTs this weekend, though, so a lot of practice games. I do kind of wonder if some of the sample sizes, all of the sweaty tournament players going to local tournaments, because there are quite a few tournament players going to the World Championships of Warhammer. Yeah. That is um, coming out, or the the actual tournament, so will be underway for the normal YouTube release. Yeah, for the normal YouTube and for any of our non-subscribed Patreon members, this will show up uh, Sunday or Saturday, Sunday, basically in during the top eight phase of the World Championships of Warhammer. And Jason, you're going to be there. And at this point, you've said that you're taking Phobos enough times mm -hmm. where I guess you're taking Phobos, and they did... Hey there. Phobos are doing cool. all that great as far as Marines go. Yeah, how are they doing in the stats this week? I haven't even looked at Phobos yet. Phobos um, down there. Like 45? Okay. You know, still better than Angels of Death, their bigger brothers. Angels of Death, the most played with 172 games, but 38% win rate. They're just too fair. Yikes. Even yeah. with that said, they are a full 10% of the meta this weekend, and there were only two undefeated records out of the 59 players that took them in some way, shape, or form. Yikes. And one player who won one game and tied the next two. So there are a handful of undefeateds. It's just far less common than the player base would. With the, the undefeateds, what, like, how many players were in each of those events? Let's see. So we've got three that I can spot. At the at a, on a quick blitz, fourteen player, twenty player, and ten player. So basically, just super duper small events, which is not all that surprising because I don't really think Angels of Death really can tango against Wolf Coven, Legionary, and Inquisition agents who all just do what they do with better Pierce, which means that you're just gonna play a fair game against guys who just outshoot you, which cannot, we just can't stand. And like, what were the the matchups for the undefeated runs? Uh, all right, out in Stockholm from Daniel Yu, he beat Phobos, which I suppose is not quite a surprise, because considering that Phobos generally have historically struggled against big, tough armor targets, and then tied against Hand of the Archon and tied against Brood Brothers. Respectable. Meanwhile, out in England, out in Leicester, we had Angels of Death with a 201 finish, beating Warp Coven, Hernkin Jaeger, and Inquisitorial Agents, getting a third place finish. Good job, Ben M. And lastly, in Spain, we had a 3-0 finish from Mario C, beating Nemesis Claw, Exaction Squad, and Angels of Death. Okay. To be fair, the two wins against Nemesis Claw and Exaction Squad are extremely low scoring at eight and six points, so I wonder if those games actually fully finished. Yeah, maybe they just ran out of time. I mean, there are plenty of times, like, and especially Angels of Death, they don't have free mission action, so they just put insane pressure on you and then just like beat you up and, and nobody scores. Yeah, you basically got to get in there, put your stats in their face because you're really not going to play a fair game. You got to you gotta hit them with 14 wounds because you're going to run out of resources, especially without the ability to ignore Pierce or make melee extremely unfair ahead of time. Yeah. Meanwhile, um, the three most unfair teams that we've come to expect on these, Warp Coven, Legionnaire, and Inquisitorial Agents, all doing very well with pretty healthy sample sizes. Yeah, but so there, those, are, those are three of the four teams that are upward in the red, with the, the new joiner there is the Void Dancer Troop. They're not really that new joining because they did that last week, too. Last it's week just they like 70% like win rate this week. They hit another 70%. They had 15, 15 players. And one, two, three, four, five undefeated records out of those 16 players. Yeah, it's and just... even out of that record, there were one, two, three players at the basically the finals with a loss. So if anyone's really struggling against Marines, maybe Void Dancers are a place to go. There were two four rounders. So let's take a look at those. So we had the a 24 player in Espana okay. where Octavio Octavio B 
took a 3-0-1 finish with Void Dancer Troop, tying once against Hernkin Jaeger and beating Death Guard, Inquisitorial Agents, and Angels of Death. Okay. Respectable. Pretty good. Respectable. And then out in the London Wargaming Tournament, there was a 44-player four-rounder where second place went to Bart L, one of the one of the players in London who's been or in the UK generically that's done very well. He beat Legionary, Legionary, Warp Coven, and Higher Tech Circle. So it just does seem like maybe the antidote to uh, Legionary and Elite's menace might just be a bunch of three APL dudes with severe power swords who severe swords that just hit you and then run away. Yeah, that is very good. Yeah, because a player going in, hitting you for nine damage, falling back, and then shooting you can probably kill a marine most of the time. Yeah, and then they can jump out at you from crazy places where you can't hit them first. Yeah. And they got eight of them, so they got more of you, more than you, and they've got a silent sniper rifle that does anywhere between 1d3 and 4d3 worth of damage, which could basically just kill a marine. Or, like, make them ruined so it's easy to kill with something else. So does seem like if you're struggling against Marines, Void Dancer Trooper definitely could be out there. Definitely maybe another team where if the Marines that are currently eating up the meta get rain back, they'll still be there crushing people, it looks like. Yeah. Um, yeah, so really those are like all the the overperforming teams are pretty well like predicted. Um, when it comes to the ones that are underperforming, we have one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's quite a few underperformers there. Um, we already kind of chatted a little bit about Angels of Death. Uh, the next one that's underperforming is Commandos. Um, yep. It, it, back down there, week yeah, to week, it looks like. Yeah, historically it was always like elites are the, the biggest threat against Commandos, but like elites weren't really a threat, so it was fine. Um, but I think that's still kind of true, but now elites are a threat. Now, elites are a much bigger problem, and commandos don't quite look like they have the tools to deal with it. That said, at an eight-player three-rounder in Espana, there was Daniel G, who, who was able to go to 201 finish, getting first in his small little tournament, beating Angels of Death, Warp Coven, and tying against Plague Marines. That tie does have five points, so again, I truly have no idea if those games finished. Because five points seems like far too few, even for a tie. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Um, and then also down in the dumps, we've got the Vespid Stingwing. New team not yeah. doing so hot. Uh, All boys out here just unable to crack power armor, even though they have Pierce 1 across the board. There was one, there were two players who did pretty well. A 3-1 three, three one, and then a 1-1-1. One, one, one. We'll look at the 3-1 because I think that's probably going to be the more interesting result. It was a 14-person tournament, so a 1-1-1 one, one, one result with... 14 players. I mean, it's good data, but it's probably not as interesting as a 28-player four-rounder in England where he got to the finals with a 3-0 record. Where is this? Where is this player? Nemesis Claw. Vespid Stingwings. He just did not score all that well. John G. Uh, beating Angels of Death, Rude Brothers, Corsair Voids Guard, and then losing in the finals against Corsair Voids Guard. So. Yeah. Seems like a hard matchup. I think Corsair Voids Guard would play pretty well against the strengths of Vespid, just because they can move pretty far and force you to take shots or have you take communions in weird spots. And maybe they played on in the dark. It's hard to know. Yeah, and then like Vespid Stingwings are like the only one that has. They're like the only team in the game that has to play against themselves. Like communion really should just be, like take away the restrictions and and just make it a purely helpful thing like instead of uh you have to spend one to do a mission action spend one to do a mission action for free yeah that could be kind of cool like you spend it and when you do you get the free mission action so you get a little bit of a boost back like it's still a restriction you can't do it without the communion point but you get a little boost when you do it that could be cool yeah that'd be that'd be neat um yeah. Kasukin still down in the dumps, still better off played in Inquisition Agents. Shame. Scout Squad, Veteran Guardsmen, Chaos Cult, Geller Pox Infected, all pretty low. Probably not to too many surprises, considering that Geller Pox and Chaos Cult ate pretty big nerfs coming into this edition. And now that elites are very good, those big stat blocks just are far less reliable when your Feel No Pains do not do the thing that they did, where every once in a while, oh, I spent a unit that was supposed to absolutely do something. And I absolutely failed. 
Yeah, just the wild dice there kind of gone. I mean, they, they do have cool other, like, abilities, um, but it seems like it's not enough. Yep. Meanwhile, uh, as far as the lower end, you know, let's look at some teams. You know, we just, just talked about Blooded with Brandon. Blooded had a 43% win rate, it looks like, which is pretty solid with a 3-0 finish out in Spain. Uh, basically, a lot of Spanish tournaments this weekend. Uh, there were a couple other test things, so maybe some of that data is a little muddy right now. So the blooded data might not be the best at the moment. Far Stalker Kinman did okay this weekend, almost at a 50-50 win rate with one 3-0 finish out at a 14-player three-round in Spain. From Hammer K, K beating Hunter Clay, Hernkin Jaeger, and Felgor Ravagers, which is pretty interesting because that means that he just never played against... Angels of Death, which or any of the elites, kind of crazy. Plague Marines return this week with a full 50-50 win rate. They've got 24 players and one, two, three, four undefeated records, five undefeated records, but one of those is a win and two ties, along with one, two, two game, two other players who are able to basically make it to the finals with a loss. So pretty good. Tempestus Aquans, the other half of Hivestorm, did okay this weekend. They had a 4-0 finish out from the London Wargamers event, and then a 2-0-1 finish out in what looks like uh, Uruguay, interestingly enough. So Emilio R, good job. He beat Angels of Death, Gallopox Infected, and then tied against Legionary. While Solid. the Tempestus Aquilons with a 4-0 finish in England at that 44-person event beat Legionary, Angels of Death, Corsair Voids Card, and Higher Tech Circle. Ooh, Honestly, that's a tough run. Pretty, pretty hot. Yeah, pretty hot. So maybe there's still something in the Tempestus Aquilons. Yeah. People, well, maybe especially after like uh, a little nudge to the balance, they'll like, emerge as some, some hot stuff. Or maybe people are still taking their time to build and paint them. And they're just yeah. kind of finally... I mean, I mean, there's, they, there's they seem like they would have the potential well. to be super popular, but... Yeah, they're definitely a team that I would expect to do pretty well, but considering those sculpts just came out, unless you were one of the diehards who had the Japanese sculpts from, like, what, four or five years ago now, it's pretty hard to have them all ready to a standard where you want to play them. So maybe there's a little bit of time lag. Maybe by the time the next weekly stat show comes out, we'll have better Air Plague Marine data. That said, we did have 24 players, which is a pretty solid number of players. Meanwhile, Novitiates, Hand of the Archon, Brood Brothers, Corsair Voids Card, and Legionary, or ooh, Novitiates, basically bring up the back as the other teams that are doing well this week. With Novitiates, you know, pretty close to the 60% win rate. Hand of the Archon, 56%, Brood Brothers, 56%, and Corsair Voids Card, 52%. So lots of choices for strong teams, but obviously all of these teams have some play against the current meta, which is the Elites. Overall, a pretty interesting. Um, it's it's a little bit. It seems like it's a little bit more level than last week. Yes, right now it's a little less feast and famine. Some of these smaller, basically, the teams that are less popular are not doing as well. And of the teams that are less popular, novitiates are probably the main standout who are doing very well. So they're hard to play, but also very good. And right now, while they're cracked. If you do want to get a taste of what it feels like to be unkillable, Novitiates are probably the closest you're going to get as far as the rule set has ever allowed you to just not die. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Um, yeah, also, this is like a much bigger sample size. It's like double the player base from last week. So um, it's cool to see that it's a little bit leveled out with, with like a lot more players there. Um, I mean, definitely there's some crazy stuff going on with like, you know, the teams that are really good are really, really good. They're, they're going to need a little bonk. But yeah, for sure. Inquisitorial agents, you know, for as much as that 63% win rate doesn't look like it's a problem, they had the b highest almost like first average loss, which was about 2.8. So the majority of them basically made it into some version of their v finals before they left, left the tournament. And that's 19 players. So of those 19 players, one, two, three, four, five fully undefeated records, and then one. Or no, six fully undefeated records and one, two, three records basically just at the cusp of finishing with a win. So pretty much uh, 11 out of 19 is a pretty crazy conversion rate. So they're doing very well. Yeah, that is pretty crazy.
Yeah. So, I mean, for and we just want to shout out, you know, our newest Patreon subscriber. So, oh, let, me, let me bring up the name. Just wanted to say thank you for joining and for anyone on the YouTube who is following and wants to give us a subscribe if you haven't done it anywhere else. We'd love to have you around. Uh, Core, Core D, thank you for joining us on Patreon and helping us keep the weekly stat show coming for both the Patreon and the YouTube watchers and for helping us keep our podcast going. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Chat with us in the Discord and uh, swing by and see us at events. All right. Well, if you are happen to be in Atlanta this weekend for the World Championships of Warhammer, try to stop by and say hi to us or join us on the Discord and let us know and we'll come try to say hi. I mean, maybe we won't have time to come say hi, but you know, we'll do our best. With long rounds, I'm sure we will. See ya. Adios.